What's up, dude? So today I'm talking about the question, if you could only do three exercises for the rest of your life, what would they be? Or six exercises or 10 exercises or 20 or 30 or 40. I get this question in various forms all of the time, so I wanted to answer it. Plus, I wanted to talk about variety. How much variety do you need in your training in the gym? How much is too much? Where is that line between enough variety to stay healthy and to make progress and too much variety where you get bogged down in the minutia? Let's get right into the list and here is my top three. Number one is gonna be the barbell sumo deadlift. Now I picked this exercise because I enjoy it, I like it, and I am slightly stronger on it compared to a conventional deadlift. Plus it seems to beat me up not quite as much. It seems to, for the most part, agree with my hips and it doesn't really take a toll on the lower back in terms of recovery. That means that I can do more because it's spreading the load between the quads and the hamstrings and the glutes and the spinal erectors. Number two is gonna be the inclined dumbbell bench press. Now I chose dumbbells because they seem to be easier, again, on the shoulder joints. If you can only pick three exercises, they had better be ones that you can recover from pretty well. Barbell bench press, barbell inclined press, I simply can't do as much work as with dumbbells. So for me, dumbbells is a better overall choice. Number three is gonna be weighted neutral grip pull-ups. Why neutral grip? Because this neutral grip is gonna be easier on the wrists, easier on the elbows, easier on the shoulders, easier on everything compared to an overhand or underhand grip a chin-up, or a typical pull-up. Neutral grip is the way to go. It is the truth. And if you can only do three exercises, well, you better choose some exercises that you can recover from and can do repeatedly on a regular basis. Why weighted? Because I ain't no bitch. Or would have to be the barbell back squat. It hits the quads much more than any kind of deadlift. It's going to work the glutes, the erectors, a little bit of hamstring, a lot of bang for your buck. It's going to work just a ton of muscles. It's a tried and true exercise for a reason. Plus, I have, well, not mastered the exercise, but I've done it enough, and I can do it proficiently enough where I can stimulate growth with this movement. Number five is gonna be the barbell bent over row. I already have a vertical pull with the pull-ups. Now I want a horizontal pull to work on the traps, the rhomboids, just the rear delts, all that thickness up in there in order to create a denser and more thick look to the upper and mid back. So any kind of row will work, but I prefer a bent over row because I'm also working the erectors and I wanna get as much bang for my buck as possible if I am only limited to a few movements. Number six is going to be the barbell overhead press, another tried and true basic standard movement that has been done for damn near a century. It works. I think this is more expendable than the other movements, which is why I put it last, but I still think it is a very solid movement. I'm doing it standing with a barbell to fully overload the delts and also to get the core involved as well. I think being able to put big or at least semi big weight overhead is something that is very functional and very useful, and therefore this makes my top six. Barely. Now, if I only did these six movements, would my physique suffer? I would say maybe a little bit, but I would also get fairly close, a lot closer than what most people think. Going on a bare bones program isn't always the worst thing in the world, because the few movements that you are doing are very, very effective. You're taking out variety, but you make sure that everything you do is effective and efficient in the gym. This has a lot of value and I think is often underestimated by a lot of people, especially beginners who are very much drawn to new and novel approaches. You might not need that. You might need to actually scale that back and focus on the basics more. You might actually get better results with fewer exercises. It seems crazy, but it's absolutely true. For example, Nayam Sulemanoglu, Sule, this guy, during his training, from what I read, he didn't have a huge amount of variety in his training, especially in the later parts of his career when he was the most successful. I think he did clean and jerk, snatch, power snatch, power clean and power jerk, front squat, and that's all. He didn't even back squat during some parts of his career because what was driving his improvement which led to gold medals, multiple gold medals. I mean, look, save some goddamn medals for the rest of us, Nyam. Well, maybe not me, but anyway. Woo! Make me lose my mind. 
was specificity. Specificity, frequency, and intensity. That's what actually drove progress, not variety or generality. Anyway, moving on to 7 through 10. Number 7, I would pick the barbell curl. This is more of actually a full body exercise, so I don't want to pick like a spider curl or an incline dumbbell curl, because this is going to be something that overloads the biceps through a full range of motion and really working the entire bicep, not just like trying to fucking isolate one head of the bicep, which is not even possible. Plus, the barbell curl is going to be working a lot of upper back, a lot of core, and a lot of shoulder as well. That is not a bad thing. I think some people think that, oh, just because your curl activates other parts, it's a bad thing. No, a basic standing barbell curl is working a lot of musculature, and that is not necessarily a bad thing. Number eight, I would pick a triceps isolation exercise. I would choose an overhead cable extension just because this seems to agree with my joints the most, and it seems to also provoke a lot of growth. Uh, I get really sore from this exercise. It seems to give me a good pump and I always have responded well to it and therefore it is my go-to triceps isolation exercise. Next number nine I would pick the deficit deadlift even though I prefer doing deficit deadlifts over sumo deadlifts again longevity and repeatability are both important and the deficit deadlift definitely takes a lot more out of me compared to a sumo deadlift. However it definitely makes the top 10 because I really really enjoy it plus for me it is a great spinal erector exercise, lat exercise, posterior chain exercise, and it's definitely worth including in the top 10 for me. Again, these are my exercises. For you, it might be totally different. Number 10 is going to be the Bulgarian split squat. Now, I have back squats in the top six, but I think having a unilateral exercise working the glutes, the glute medius, and just being overall balanced and athletic is a good choice and therefore for me this cracks the top 10 and I highly encourage everyone even power lifters to have some kind of unilateral movement that you do on a regular basis it might not need to be in your theoretical top 10 but it should get done at some point so that is my top 10 I am quite confident in saying that I could achieve at least 90% of the results as if I could use as many exercises as I wanted. If I was not constrained to 10 and I could use a thousand exercises, that would not provide me massively better results. It might provide me 10% faster results or 10% better results, but it wouldn't be game changing or groundbreaking or any of those other similar words. It would be slightly better. 11 to 20 would be flat barbell bench press just to fully overload sometimes dumbbells can be a pain in the ass and you just want to move some heavy weight yeah buddy let's do this i think flat barbell bench press is overrated but still worth being in the top 20. next i would pick pull downs because they are similar to pull-ups obviously you're pulling something down rather than yourself up and they don't have as much abdominal involvement or core activation but they still have value and I still like doing them, especially if I use different attachments. It can hit the lats and the upper back in a slightly different way. 13 would be lateral raises, just because I do think you need some kind of isolation movement in order to fully target that side delt. Pressing doesn't really cut it, but if you're on a bare bones program, I don't think lateral raises would really make the top 10, just because you want to focus on those compound movements. Next would be face pulls. This is going to be good for prehab, injury, prevention, whatever the fuck that means, injury risk reduction, I guess is a better way to say it. Uh, it's good to have some kind of external rotation work just to balance yourself out, to get you know good extension throughout the thoracic spine, which I clearly need. Next would be Romanian deadlifts. This could easily be in the top 10 for a lot of people, and I actually considered it instead of deficit deadlifts, um, but I like the overloading factor and the increased range of motion that deficit deadlifts offer. But it's a great movement for the hamstrings, the glutes, the erectors, even the lats and traps get a good whooping, and therefore it is definitely a lot of bang for your buck. Next would be lunges. I think these are kind of replaceable with Bulgarian split squats, but I kind of prefer split squats just due to the constant tension and the fact that you can really focus on what the muscle is doing because you're not moving as much in space.
But I do think that ability to move forward under load is something that is very, very useful. And plus, I actually find that due to the moving and the swinging of the dumbbells, I often use 30 or 40 kilos per hand. I actually get a pretty good trap and rear delt workout as well, which is a nice bonus. Next up, we have front squats. Back squats are great, and I would actually rank those above front squats, but I think the core involvement, the upper back involvement, and the increased quad activation for a given load makes front squats a clear winner and definitely worth including in a lot of training programs. They suck. Almost no one likes front squats. In fact, most people hate them. Even some Olympic weightlifters hate them, but I think they do have value and they do provide a lot of stimulus over a lot of lagging muscle groups for a lot of people, myself included. Next up, we have the chest supported row. I typically do these with an incline bench and then using dumbbells, but if you have a machine, that is gonna be good as well. This is good for taking the erectors out of the equation. Perhaps your lower back is fatigued or your posterior train is uh, messed up from doing deadlifts or squats or whatever. And I think it's good to sometimes be able to focus on the back without worrying about your posture or getting injured and just being able to go to failure and not worry about your posture being the limiting factor. Number 19 is gonna be a hamstring curl. Now I do a seated machine hamstring curl for the simple reason that it's the only one my gym has. But you can do these seated, standing, prone, with a dumbbell off of a bench, with a partner, with bands, with a exercise ball, an exercise ball, whatever, it's all good. Um, they're all pretty similar. I do think it's important to have some type of curling movement. You could do Nordics. There's just a million curling variations. You could check my book for a bunch more. And I think it's good to have some type of curling movement just because a certain chunk of the hamstring is only activated through knee flexion, not through hip extension. So if you're deadlifting, Romanian deadlifts, good mornings, any of that shit, it's not gonna trigger that hamstring growth. Number 20 is gonna be the Arnold Press. Dylan, you son of a bitch. Now this is something that I've been doing recently and I do like the extended range of motion, really getting a nice flex at the top and a stretch at the bottom that a typical normal dumbbell press doesn't really give you. Barbells also don't really have the same feeling. I think getting that stretch on the front delt and really being able to like extend and flex upward does provide enough value for these to crack the top 20, at least for me. So that is my top 20 thus far. How close can you get to your genetic, natural, muscular potential using only your top 20 exercises, which is obviously gonna be different for you? I would say you can get within 95%. So if you, you know, are going to be 100 kilos, just like fully maxed out, which doesn't actually happen, by the way, eh, you could probably get to around 95 kilos using just 20 exercises, if not even closer. But let's press on and get a little bit more squeeze from this juice. Next up, we have incline dumbbell curls. I like how the strength curve is a little bit different from a standing barbell curl. It works the bottom position a little bit more, really gets a good stretch on the bicepticles. And um, it's also a unilateral, well, it's not unilateral, but it, uh, it does tell you if you have any imbalances, maybe one arm goes up a little bit faster, which a barbell might not tell you. Next, we have rear delt raises. I think it's good to work the rear delts in a very specific, isolated manner. But again, it's not gonna be in the top 10. Plus, for posture reasons, I think working the traps, the mid traps, upper traps, that whole rhomboid trap region is a good thing as well. Next up at number 23, we have push downs. Now you hit the overhead stuff before, now you wanna work just a traditional exercise that is gonna work the more medial kind of head, although of course they are all working together. And uh, again, just good to use a different angle. I usually use a rope with these just because it's easiest on the joints. Next up, we have back extensions. This is good for decompressing the spine, also works the ever-loving pants off of your hamstrings and your glutes, a little bit of spinal erectors. They really should be called hip extensions because that is what the main focus is. And this is a really, really good complement to squatting and deadlifting and Romanian deadlifts when you don't want as much compression on the spine. Number 25 is gonna be hanging leg raises, the first core exercise. And this is because I tolerate these. I don't like these, I don't like any core work but there's something that I at least can get done without wanting to rip my eyes out of my face. Plus they do work the hip flexors, the abs as a whole. You can go to the side a little bit to get some oblique involvement and therefore it's a good choice for me. For you, might be different. 26, we have the good morning. God damn it. 
Now this is a fine posterior chain exercise. I find that the limiting factor is actually bracing and the abdominals, which is something that I personally lack. Therefore, these have value to me. I think for a lot of people, especially if you're just interested in like physique purposes, aesthetics, they're probably not really worth it. Um, they are slightly more risky than deadlifting, and I don't think they provide anything else that a deadlift would not give you. Next, 27, we have the neck flexion. Now, I think having a decently developed neck is something that is important. It's something that I need to work on, and therefore, they make the top 30. Again, this is not going to be a top 10 exercise unless maybe you're a wrestler or something, but I think including it in your training, if it's a goal of yours, is something that is important. 28, we have reverse grip curls. I think this is a great forearm exercise, not quite as important as a traditional underhand curl, but going overhand, even though it drastically and dramatically limits the weight that you can use, it does have a lot of value. Just make sure that there is not any excess pressure or stress or strain on the wrists. Experiment with your grip width. You might have to go really wide in order to not get any kind of wrist pain or wrist issues, um, but it's still a great exercise. 29, we have cable crossovers. You can go high to low, low to high, middle to middle. You can do them one arm at a time. You know, obviously some people are all about these. I do think they are good just because they allow you to go all the way across the body, um, which a bench press might not. Um, you can get like this really uh, nice contraction, um, which I don't think is 100% necessary, but uh, I do think it feels good and it can maybe perhaps give you some extra growth in some cases. Finally, rounding out the top 30, we have the hip thrust. Now, I don't think these are as necessary as some people think. The thrust is certainly not a must, and I will do a full video on that, but I do think it can provide results. It's very easy to recover from. It obviously targets the glutes without a whole lot of leg involvement. It's easy to learn. It's easy to do. It's sort of a pain in the ass to set up sometimes. I remember I was doing glute bridges with seven plates per side, like 300 or 320 kilos and the gym ran out of plates and so it can be a pain in the ass to set up at times but it still is a decent exercise when it comes to 30 to 40 40 to 50 and 50 to 60 i will just put them on the screen to save time these are all good exercises in my book i have i think 100 exercises or more and it does have value. These are good exercises. They are fine choices, and I encourage you to experiment with your training. But after five or six or seven years of training, you should have a fairly short list of what works for you. Training money in terms of your willpower to train, in terms of your recovery, in terms of the time that you have to train is a very limited resource. And therefore, spending your training money intelligently is something that is very, very important. And I've tried thousands of exercises. Without any exaggeration, I have literally tried thousands of exercises. The vast majority I have thrown away because they simply were not very good for hypertrophy, for my goals. So I'm not saying don't experiment in your training because I've experimented a shitload, more than probably 99.9% .9 of people in the gym. But the conclusion that I have come to, and many other people have come to as well, professional athletes and just people in the industry who don't sell you bullshit, they have come to the conclusion that you don't need that many exercises. Past a certain point, it is counterproductive. If you go from 30 to 50 exercises, you get diminishing returns. If you go from 50 to 100, you almost certainly get negative returns because that time spent on that 50 to 100 exercise range, those exercises which are solid, but not nearly as solid as the one to 50, you are wasting your time. It squeezes out the good stuff that you should actually be doing. And a lot of people do this for the sake of novelty. They sacrifice results in order to feel good in the short term. They get rid of their discipline for dopamine. For me, this list was extremely difficult to write, but for different reasons. For number one to three, there are so many good exercises that I wanna stuff into that top three. Same thing for one to six or one to 10. After 10, 
I'm sort of like, all right, well, I already have a hinge, I have a squat, I have a, an extension, a curl, I have a row, a pull, a push, a press. What else do I really need? You get diminishing returns, and I know I'm sounding like a broken record, because you already have that movement pattern. And your second hinge doesn't provide nearly as much benefit as the first one. It honestly doesn't even matter that much which hinge you do. As long as you are hinging and you are overloading and you're doing it correctly, you are going to see results. But if you add in 18 hinges, all of a sudden it suddenly becomes a little bit more difficult to progress. I would say if you prefer a bare bones style, 10 to 20 exercises is going to be a good amount. If you're kind of average, 20 to 30. If you're obsessive and you like tracking a lot of different exercises, you just, you're a data fiend like me, 30 to 60 might be okay. But past 60, I think you are probably doing yourself a disservice. Even if you enjoy it, even if you think like you're progressing faster, you are probably kidding yourself. And I've done that. I've been there. I've been someone who's tracking literally 20 different kinds of curls until I realized, oh, wow, I haven't done this curl in like three years. And it's easy to hit a PR and it feels good, but I'm not really getting that much out of the movement just because I'm switching movements so regularly. So be aware and beware of people in the fitness industry who are trying to sell you a different exercise every single week. Odds are they didn't do that to build their physique. They stuck to the basics, whatever the basics are for them, and they just stuck to what works, the solid 20, 30, 40 exercises, and they rotated those and they got big and strong doing those movements. So if they're trying to sell you a different exercise every single week, they're trying to sell you a lie. But it's very common because, hey, everyone loves money, right? All right, that's all for this video. Like, subscribe, all the good stuff, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. Enough talk.